like no other. Movement, change, strange. These are the words that could define a 2020 tournament being played in 2021, featuring just 48 teams and not featuring the defending national champs. That's a first. And that is taking place entirely in the state of North Carolina. But maybe it's the words that stay the same that matter most. A goal, a dream, a team, and a chance to win a national championship. Welcome to Wickmed Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. Our second game of the evening of the 2020 NCAA Women's College Cup. Santa Clara, North Carolina coming your way in the second semifinal. You had to wait a little longer because our first match of the night saw the Florida State Seminoles get past the Virginia Cavaliers, but not before they went to overtime and a penalty kick shootout. So we have plenty of drama already as we welcome you in. I'm Jen Hilden along with former U.S. national team and Virginia midfielder Lori Lindsay. And Lori, looking at this matchup between these two teams, I'm not sure their roads could have been much more different. For North Carolina, a pretty normal fall, and then they go unbeaten in the spring. They have yet to give up a goal in the spring. A lot of consistency both in their schedule and in the results. Not the case for Santa Clara. <laughs> Certainly not the case. And for Santa Clara, only seven games since 2019. All of those games came leading into this tournament in the spring. They didn't play a game in the fall. So this is a team that's very much still tinkering and looking for some continuity. One of those players for Santa Clara that they'll look to for adaptability is Julie Doyle. So good at getting isolated 1v1, taking players on. But she's best when she can serve Davis balls in, like we saw against Arkansas with her two assists. And one of the best players for North Carolina, their Herman Trophy finalist, Brianna Pinto. She certainly is one of their best players, leads the team with 13 goals, five assists. She's so deceptive with the ball when she's going forward, but she can set play deep, and she can also be asked to look to go both ways tonight and look to take on that back line. Well, North Carolina looking to get to their third straight NCAA championship game. Meanwhile, is it a new era for Santa Clara trying to get back to the title game for the first time since 2002? The NCAA Women's College Cup is brought to you by Heineken. Enjoy Heineken responsibly. The lights are shining bright here in Cary, North Carolina as we get ready to start our second semifinal between North Carolina and Santa Clara. North Carolina, the number two seed overall in this tournament, playing just down the road from their home stadium. Here is their starting lineup, and they get Macy Bell back on defense. They do. They're in their traditional 4-3-3. Macy Bell will be looking to provide width and stretch the length of the field, but then also Rachel Jones up top will look to run at that back line. And then for Santa Clara, in a 4-3-3 as well, or a 4-1-3-2, whatever you want to call it, they'll be led by number 22, Loeda, in the back. But it's all about nine and 10 up front. They're ready to go here, so we've got to move along as well. They have had to wait a little longer. So now we can kick off our second semifinal after our first one tonight went to double overtime and a penalty kick shootout. Saw the number one overall seed Florida State Seminoles advance to the NCAA championship game. The Seminoles' first trip back to the final since they won it all in 2018. Here is Macy Bell. She's been out with injury. North Carolina only played her for 10 minutes a half in the last game. That is all she has played all spring. But she is such a valuable player, Lori, that Anson Dorrance wanted her to start this match. And I'll be curious to see how this goes in terms of her playing on that right side, typically a center back but gets the start on the right hand, and she'll be able to provide some width, but also the ability to get up and down that sideline. Jerry Smith in his 34th season as head coach at Santa Clara. And he knows well this North Carolina opponent and Anson Dorrance, those two coaches, both with over 500 wins in their career. Jerry Smith just reaching that mark 
earlier this spring. Santa Clara Broncos and in Santa Clara County, one of the first to shelter at home in the fall. So no soccer of any kind. They had to play their games in the spring, still had some disruption, but wound up winning the West Coast Conference Championship. And they bring in one of the most feared front lines in the country, Kelsey Turnbow. A big part of that. She's on the ball now. Going against a, a defense for North Carolina that's been excellent. Tar Heels have yet to concede a goal this spring. But it's also revamped, Glory, as that is where the Tar Heels have really had to shift some players around, and Anson Dorrance has had to make a lot of changes. And I mentioned those 500 win club for both he and Jerry Smith. Yeah, Anson does have a few more, 889, as he has numbers, and this North Carolina program has numbers that will never be matched with the dynasty that he has created with the Tar Heels. Their last NCAA championship was their 21st, that coming in 2012. So it's a drought in Chapel Hill by their standards. Well, it is just so amazing what he's been able to do with this program. And in each year, just having to make adjustments but still finding ways to win, at least making themselves competitive coming into this tournament, even in this game, started four freshmen on the back line, haven't given up a goal in this tournament. Just unbelievable what they've been able to get out of their players and continue to, to make a run for the championship. Rachel Jones trying to challenge that back line of Santa Clara. When I talked to Anson earlier today, he said with what they've seen, they think Santa Clara brings in the best front line in the country, along with USC. He put them in the category, but with Turnbow, who has eight goals, and Dequila, who has seven goals, that's pretty productive from your two front runners. Then you add in Doyle, sort of that X factor, who can really get things going as well. Sam Meza to Brianna Pinto. How much can Pinto get on the ball? That is one of the keys I know you're looking for, Lori, for North Carolina. Well, it was one of the questions that we had coming into this game was how Jerry Smith's side was going to line up. We talk about how much they've had to tinker, only seven games coming into this tournament. Unbelievable what they've been able to do in the, in the ride that they've gone on, especially with having to adapt. But with the different formations, one of them was playing with just one holding mid. And with the likes of Meza and Pinto, they're two number 10s for North Carolina. How dangerous they are. Can they get on the ball and isolate Nezu, the holding mid for Santa Clara? Zizzy Cox in the corner. Ali Gambone, who's moved into the starting lineup this spring. She gets it into the box for Pinto, who brought it down. Doesn't quite roll out. Here is Bell. Gambone drives it. Yes. Bell, the header! What a dream start that would have been. Is she a right back or is she a North center Carolina forward? I'm shot. not sure. Number 25. With just 20 Pinto. minutes under her belt, though, doing a good job of reading the play, getting in the mix, and just sends that one wide off her head. But this is something that Jerry Smith talked about coming into this game, Jen, just weathering the energy and the depth of North Carolina. Just staying calm making sure that they can match that energy, but also be able to play their game, settle things down. And a lot of that will have to do is just staying tight as a unit, connecting their passes, and forcing North Carolina to have to chase a bit. Pinto. Now Jones. Pinto charging forward through the middle. Has a bit of space to work with. Now it closes. Foul on the outside of the box. That is Emma Reeves who committed that foul and sets North Carolina up for the free kick. And this is what makes Brianna Pinto so good. Just her ability to run at back lines, her desire to have an impact in these games, just draws players and then draws an even more dangerous free kick right on top of the box. Pinto selected number three overall in the NWSL draft. She'll be headed to Gotham FC, team in New Jersey. But she's playing this spring season first, trying to win a national championship. Yeah. Uh, no. 
Pinto will take it. Wall does its job. Jones ready for the rebound. And couldn't do much, and then Broncos just <laughs> saying, get it out of here. And sometimes that's what you need to do, just alleviate pressure, regroup defensively. Cox on the run, but so is the ball. It goes out of bounds. Not as well struck as Brianna Pinto would want. A good job by the wall not to jump, just stands their ground, makes the play. But that play, Jen, leading to that free kick was all about the two attacking tins for North Carolina. Pinto, as we mentioned, and, and Meza look to flank the likes of Nezu, the holding mid for Santa Clara. And we'll see what kind of adjustments Santa Clara make throughout the game if those two start to get isolated and get on the ball more than Santa Clara wants. Broncos looking to get that ball up to their attacking players who have been so good. Santa Clara 9-1-0 and on their shortened season, just getting those few matches in before the NCAA tournament. Seven, as you mentioned, Lori. And Jerry Smith, of all his players through the years, so many great players, Allie Wagner, Leslie Osborne, Danielle Slayton. <laughs> we kind of laughed when we were talking to some of the players because they were like, we want to put Santa Clara on the map. We want to show everyone <laughs> small schools. We're like, you have some living legends in this <laughs> game. <laughs> what do you mean? But as I said, perhaps a bit of a new era because it has been a while for Santa Clara. They have won NCAA championship. That was in 2001, made the final in 02. This is their 11th College Cup, but last one was 04. Here's Doyle, left-footed shot, saved by Dickey. And the Santa Clara team is gonna give North Carolina a different look. You have Doyle who likes to get isolated, one of you wants, she can go in line. This time she opts to go inside, can show some of her footwork off. Can't get enough of Ben to get around Dickey, but it's a good look early on. And with North Carolina paying so much attention defensively to the likes of Daquilla and Turnbow up top, it's gonna to free up some players like Doyle or even Minty coming through centrally. I was gonna say before we get off on our tangent of, uh, of our friends who play for Santa Clara, this team will adjust and adapt. They'll switch formations, so keep an eye on that as this game goes along. <laughs> Still a chance in the box. The shot is up and over. That was Turnbow. No quit in this Bronco attack and a corner kick on the way. And we mentioned Macy Bell, not a traditional outside right back. And we can see that she's getting pinched in centrally, leaving tons of space out wide left for Santa Clara, doing a good job of switching the point, finding that space. And it's a, allowing these opportunities and ultimately a good look on goal from Turnbow. Turnbow will take the corner, cleared before it can get to any real danger. That defense may be young for North Carolina, but they feel very secure with their goalkeeper, Claudia Dickey. Junior from Charlotte has taken over this position full time. And if you know North Carolina soccer, you know Anson Dorrance is not afraid to play a couple of goalkeepers throughout a season, let them each have a half but Claudia Dickey has just been so good that I think now when he makes the case of having the best goalkeeper in the country, she's got the numbers to back it up. She's not just playing a half a game. 15 shutouts lead the nation. Cox still going. Izzy Cox in the box. Needs some help, Jones! Just wide. And the work ethic from Cox just to make this out of nothing. It's a bit of a poor touch in the back for Santa Clara. Cox pounces on it, keeps it moving, and then it's Jones who looks to strike it first time. Good recovery, though, from Santa Clara to be able to cover that, to push Jones off balance. Four shots already for the Tar Heels in this match.
Martin is a player playing against North Carolina regardless is on the field. The energy, the pressure that they employ, so difficult to play against. There's going to be moments in this game where Santa Clara, once they get a hold of the ball, needs to settle down, manage the game, just keep possession, connect their passes just to catch their breath. Bouncing ball into the gloves of the goalkeeper, Marley Nicholas. Nicholas listed as a redshirt freshman, but has been there a while. This is her first year getting to play, but she was in with the team in 2018, redshirted that year, wound up having to sit out 2019 due to injury. You know what happened in 2020, nothing at all in terms of soccer in the fall. And so now finally she's getting her chance in goal. Not really a true freshman, double red shirt in a way. Gambone. Now Ashley Gambone in the box, and there's Nicholas off her line. And when Santa Clara gets set up defensively, they are dropping Doyle deeper to help out in that center mid position, but it's Gambone that found a little bit of space. Nicholas does well to read it off her line. Julie Doyle, senior for the Broncos. Great speed, gets around the corner. A little slip from Pinto, but Meza there to help her out. This is a North Carolina team that lost probably more than any other team in this College Cup in terms of a difference from the fall to the spring. Emily Fox, outside back, who's played for the U.S. national team, was the number one pick in the NWSL draft, went to Racing Louisville. New expansion team in the league, Taylor Otto, one of their key midfielders, also drafted by Louisville. And then, of course, they have their lacrosse player, Julia Dorsey, who's busy on her lacrosse scholarship playing for the lacrosse team this spring. So those are some pretty big changes. But a lot of talent still. Meza to Jones. Good job collectively by the defense. Play on, says the referee. Pinto takes the shot. And when North Carolina goes, they go fast and furious, sending players forward. And it's Joe, excuse me, it's Pinto that says, I'm gonna go myself. Just pulls that one wide. North Carolina might have gotten a little fired up having to wait extra before this match. as the first one took a little longer than expected. And it's so, still so early, Jen, but building out of the back, I think Santa Clara has to have somebody next to Nezu just to help build up, have more players around the ball, because that's where they're getting caught playing out of the back. It's North Carolina just looking to pounce, put them under pressure, and then they have a numbers up situation. Gambone moved into the starting lineup, was part of the second unit for North Carolina. They substitute in waves, do the Tar Heels. That's where Gambone was in the fall. Pinto, not on the same page with Cox. Four goals, four assists for Izzy Cox, sophomore out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Pinto, some incredible numbers with the fall and spring seasons combined. 13 goals, five assists. by Santa Clara, Sally Menti. West Coast Conference Freshman of the Year, but they got stuck in that one spot on the field and North Carolina took it away. Libby Moore, 
Pinto stretched out, and then she committed the foul. Join us tomorrow night when the men take good good over good. on ESPNU at 6 Eastern for their College Cup. Marshall and North Carolina will start you off, and then Pitt and Indiana at 8.30. Then on Monday, come on back. Champions will be crowned right here on ESPN2, starting with the women's final at 5.30 Eastern, and then the men at 8. North Carolina men and women, both in the College Cup. And plenty of Tar Heel Blue in the stands. A limited amount of fans were allowed and talking to the players, they were just so excited about getting that feel of the fans, giving them that life, that energy that they've missed so much in so many of their games this season. And it's so loud with just limited fans as well. <laughs> so we forget what it's like when there's a packed well, house. I want to remember that. I want to be reminded. <laughs> Hopefully we're getting that way on the road. Avery Patterson sending that ball forward. A freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida. Didn't play in the fall for North Carolina. Starting now on that back line. This is the space, right, that I know you've kind of been looking at, and Pinto has been feasting. Jones. Tolentino gives it a whirl. Nicholas has to punch with Cox coming in. Cox took the worst of it. But a chance for Santa Clara to get things going the other direction. Turnbow finds herself with three Tar Heels around her. No problem, still gets it up to Daquila who is offside. And this is what makes this partnership for Santa Clara. Those two up top so dangerous. One will check, the other one will look to get in behind. So difficult to keep an eye on if you're the opposing team's defense. That's a good looking ball in behind. Daquila in an offside position. But good look from her just to open up this game a bit, see if they can stretch the back line for North Carolina open up some space underneath for the likes of Minty and even Doyle to be able to roam, start to get a hold of this game for Santa Clara. Is he Dequila, goal or assist in every NCAA match so far for Santa Clara? Dequila, a mistake in the back and Dequila makes the Tar Heels pay. First goal that North Carolina has conceded since the ACC championship game in the fall. And it's just a mistake in the back from North Carolina. Santa Clara does well to pick it off in the midfield. And there's a little combination play. It's a deep run from Minty to be able to open up some space. And there's a mistake in the back from Allen. Can't clear it. And Dequil just in the right place at the right time. But this finish is just composed. Could have gone far post. Gets her heads up though. And just slots it home. All the momentum for North Carolina so far in the first 20 minutes, and then Santa Clara, just like that, makes them pay. That front line, which has been so good, is going to make you pay if you make a mistake. Now North Carolina having to fight their way back from behind. It was a good glimpse of what Santa Clara can do once they get a hold of the ball. We saw that deep run just to open up a little bit of space for Turnbow from Minty. Those little nuanced runs out of the midfield. So difficult to defend. And when you're looking at this back line for North Carolina that's still so young, you add in Macy Bell, who does have some experience of playing out of position, really need to take advantage of that. And Bell has now been subbed off, Lori. We knew her minutes were going to have to be monitored in this match. Talia Della Peruta 
freshman out of coming Georgia has come back on and who's been made into a defensive player by need this spring season for North Carolina. Tar Heels trailing after giving up the first goal that they've allowed in 694 minutes. I mean, that is an incredible stretch. No ACC games were played in terms of conference games in the spring, but North Carolina had four games that they were able to get in against Delaware, Tennessee, Villanova, Columbus State. So some opportunities to figure out how things were going to go without some key pieces that they knew they'd be without this spring. Santa Clara, despite their disruptions, perhaps the more played in team though, as they had to go through a conference season in the spring. They won their conference championship for the 11th time. And this is going to be a foul in the middle of the field against Meza. Foul indicated against the Tar Heel. And unlike the first game, Jen, with Virginia and Florida State knowing each other so well, so many similarities, a lot of differences between these two teams. And I think it favors Santa Clara, North Carolina. There's an energy, a change in, in, in personnel halfway through the halves, typically. So a good understanding across the country on how North Carolina plays. But a lot of times, some of these West Coast teams go under the radar, favors Santa Clara with how they want to play. Della Bruta carried that ball all the way up to Cox. And just to, to kind of back up your point a little bit, I've mentioned earlier that this is the third time we've had three ACC teams in the College Cup. The two previous times, the ACC did not win the national championship. It was 2011 and 2013. And that one outlier, both times <laughs> from the West Coast, UCLA and Stanford, came away with the national title, Santa Clara would love to do the same. Turnbow, turning on the Jets. She gets back to her feet quickly. Drives it, the header was blocked. And then Dickey picks it up. Santa Clara gaining some momentum, pulling that back line out. This starts from the fact that Jaquila and Turnbow, one pulls the back line out, the other one goes again. Finds some space out wide left. Another good looking opportunity. And I love talking to Jerry Smith about how a lot of teams get caught up in formations and how they're gonna play. And he said one of the reasons they've been able to be successful this year and having to adapt with limited games on their side is they go for principles. They understand what they want in the defensive third, they understand what they want in the middle third, and they understand what they want in the attacking third. And it doesn't matter who you're playing, what formation, they're gonna stick with that, and then they can adapt on the fly as they go. And really good job so far in this first 25 minutes of this game. First 10 minutes, how to weather the storm. A lot of energy from North Carolina now have settled in. Meza. Cox couldn't get there. <laughs> Julie Doyle North Carolina. causing problems. senior. You mentioned it had assists on both goals in Santa Clara's win against a very good Arkansas team in the third round of the tournament. As seeded teams, both North Carolina and Santa Clara able to receive a bye in the first round of this 48 team field. 16 fewer than our normal 64, which we've had in the women's NCAA tournament every year since 2001. 
But obviously this is a different year in many ways. So those top 16 teams that were seeded in the tournament received buys in the first round. So three games coming into this semifinal matchup for each North Carolina and Santa Clara. Tolentino has some space, wants to attack. Jones. A two-man game here to woman game for the Tar Heels with Tolentino and Jones. That shot blocked. Enough of that, says Doyle. Gambone on the run. Now to Cox. Tar Heels have not gotten a lot of goal scoring out of their front line, as Anson Dorrance will be the first to tell you. They've had to rely on their defense quite a bit and just scoring from a number of places. Doyle doing well just to deny Rachel Jones. Seeing her in the attack, taking on 1v1, but also working back. Gambone does have seven assists on the season. No goals, though. Four goals for Cox. Six goals, five assists for Jones. But just one of those goals coming in the spring did most of her damage with more games to play in the fall. Marissa Buckness, member of the all-freshman team, in the West Coast Conference. Nezu. Oh, good ball in. Yeah, quick turn by Menti. Freshman of the year in the conference and Claudia Dickey, the dive and the slide. And that goal for Santa Clara, just giving them some confidence, settling down now, starting to play their game, forcing North Carolina to have to sit back a bit and, and pick and choose who they're going to step to. And credit to Santa Clara, starting to get more movement centrally, more players in and around. We talked about that for the likes of Nezu having more support, and they're dropping players deeper, helping set play, and it's opening up some players higher up the field. Kota Nezu, freshman out of Nagoya, Japan. Scored a goal in Santa Clara's first game of the tournament, round two win against Ohio State, which the Broncos won four to one in convincing fashion. It's the only goal they've conceded, a couple of shutouts against Arkansas and then Clemson in their last two matches. Lock down, that'll set up a corner. First of the match for North Carolina. Jones will go over to take it. For North Carolina, number 10, Rachel Jones. Tar Heels, the number one scoring team in the country. 48 goals in the fall and spring combined. Falls to Della Peruta, too strong. Thank you. Our next MLS match is on ESPN2, ESPN Deportes, and the app Sunday. It's an Eastern Conference matchup between the Revs and the crew. New England is tied for first with NYCFC. While Columbus is just two points back, our coverage begins at 6 Eastern on Sunday. Here come the Broncos again. Menti finds Turnbow. Her shot blocked. She doesn't need much space, does she, to get a shot off. Doyle now. Oh, 
Great effort there defensively by Jones as she could see what Gore was winding up back there. But Santa Clara will be happy with this, having the likes of Jones having to drop so deep, making clearances in her own defensive block, or box, excuse me. Karen Gore, pretty versatile player, sophomore out of Israel, was born in Florida though. You can see her outside back in the midfield, both sides of the field, depending on what kind of tinkering, Jerry Smith's favorite word, her coach is doing in the game. Ball in the box, Cox is after it. Whoa, what a setup. And beautiful delivery too from Tolentino. And now, here comes the line change. And a little bit of space for Tolentino to be able to serve that ball in. Izzy Cox can't get enough on it, but it's a good little run in behind. Reese in the end has it covered. The line change I mentioned. The second unit coming on for North Carolina. Ruby Grant in the attacking midfield. Rachel Dorwart, number nine up top. Alexis Strickland in the front line. Tori Hansen in the midfield. Hallie Clanky as well. And Riley Quinlan in the midfield. And Santa Clara also did a line change. Okay, I was ready for one. I wasn't <laughs> ready for both. We'll catch you up on all of those as I get them situated here. A little like for like there. Jerry Smith knew what was coming, had his own changes to make. Skylar Smith, Callie Halverson, Marika Gway. Sianna Almazai and Ellie Glenn, your changes for Santa Clara. Interesting. Well, it's one thing that Jerry Smith talked to us about, and we've mentioned earlier in this game, just the energy and, and the second unit that North Carolina brings in. And really, that was what this game was going to come down to. His team really executing great goal from Del Delquilla. Really good team goal have calmed themselves down, but knew with a second unit from North Carolina they were going to have to, to continue to fight, continue to find ways to manage that. And one way you do that is make the subs yourself. <laughs> On the side. There's Skylar Smith. And a lot of times, the second unit for North Carolina has really lifted the team and been the higher scoring unit, both in the fall and in the spring for North Carolina. So we'll see if either of these two can make a difference for their respective teams. So they're getting it's pretty good minutes here. Still over 10 to play in our first half. Santa Clara leading it off that Izzy DeQuilla goal in the 20th minute. Del Peruta. Bouncing ball in the box from Quinlan. No problem for Nicholas. Offside flag going up anyway. One thing I think this Santa Clara team does really well is they look for the second pass, not the most obvious or the nearest pass, 
They'll bypass the, the first runner that's checking in, look to play long, and then players are able to spin off and, and open up some space. It's able and allowed them to be able to bypass that first line of defense for North Carolina. And we know that, that pressure from North Carolina can suffocate teams. So good awareness from Jerry Smith's side. Precise passing can beat pressure and find some space behind that wave if the passes are on. Tolentino. Nezu stood her ground defensively. Other side now for the Tar Heels is Quinlan. As you might imagine, a pretty strong contingent of North Carolina fans in the stands, although I do see a good number of red, Santa Clara red, over there as well. Foul indicated against the Tory Heels. Tori Hansen, sophomore out of Raleigh, North Carolina, committing the foul. Scored her first career goal Earlier in this tournament, in the third round, is the game winner for the Tar Heels against Texas A&M. Just one nothing wins for North Carolina. Their last two matches against Texas A&M and Washington beat Denver 2-0 in their first match of the tournament. And obviously have not trailed in quite some time. Not since the ACC Championship, which is their only loss on this season to the Florida State Seminoles, the team that is awaiting the winner of this match in our championship match on Monday. feels a bit more chaotic, it's not the right word, but disorganized, I think, with all the substitutions. <laughs> Chaos can be a good thing, especially if you're the one creating it, but it just seems like a little bit of a mess in we're some ways. We're looking at each other like, who's on the field? <laughs> Maybe that's why. <laughs> Bouncing ball. And Nicholas. Goes up, snags it out of the air. No chance there for Ruby Grant, freshman out of London, England. Tar Heels haven't had a shot in 25 minutes. It was an onslaught early, as they so often do. That one will count, but it really won't challenge Nicholas much. And even though Santa Clara has made some changes themselves, they've done well to manage the overload of, of substitutes for North Carolina. They'll be happy with that last attempt. A shot from, from far out from distance. That's easy in the end for Nicholas. And in some ways against the North Carolina team, that's all you need to do. You have a 1-0 lead. You know that's not going to be enough. Santa Clara looking for more. Dickey came out hard. And that was Sienna Elmazai, sophomore of Saratoga, California, running after it. Well, it's a good little through ball from Halverson. And I'm not sure that's a clear penalty kick, but that's a tough call from the angle that we're seeing. Tough challenge, Dickey comes out, all three players collide. No foul called on the play. It will be a corner kick for Santa Clara, their second. Box flicked dangerously back to Santa Clara. Right. 
Nezu. Now Gore. This is Eden White, junior out of Portland, one of the center backs for the Broncos. throw. Broncos knew right where they wanted to go. Skylar Smith turned, had her ball go out. They'll take the corner. Corners on both sides. And Dickey flying out to take that ball. And she had to keep a hold of that because there was tons of traffic around her. She came off her line aggressively. Does well to hold on. But I like the ebbs and flows of this game for Santa Clara so far. Done well to manage the game defensively when needed, when they haven't been able to keep possession, but it's allowed to work themselves into the attack. Doing a good job of finding some of the space out wide. Three minutes remaining in our first half. Izzy Dequila scoring for Santa Clara. Her eighth goal of the season. That was the 20th minute and the Broncos Holding on to that one goal lead so far, looking for more. Halverson got it through. Strickland had the right idea, not the right touch, trying to pick out Ruby Grant. May work out for her anyway, though. She stays with it. Here's Grant, and the new pieces for this Tar Heel team in the spring. Strickland, Santa Clara, everybody saying she's off. The assistant referee agrees. No goals in a hundred minutes of our first semifinal between Florida State, number one overall seed in this tournament, number one team in the country, and Virginia. They went to penalty kicks. And Virginia missed the first, had their next two attempts saved. Florida State perfect, and all they needed was three. They hit those from the spot to then move on to the championship. Come on, Kylie, come on, Kylie! Dequila's goal, standing tall so far for Santa Clara. A lot of soccer left to play. Getting close to halftime, and it's like North Carolina trying to make Carolina another substitution. Molly Bates. Number 12, Alexis Strickland. So Molly Baker, freshman forward out of Gilbert, Arizona, comes on for Strickland, who herself was a sub coming into the match earlier this half. Alverson, good vision. against Santa Clara. One last long ball for Patterson. Ten, nine, eight, that's a handball. Now that's gonna do it for our first half, Lori. So the North Carolina Tar Heels, the number two seed in this tournament, playing just 
down the road from their home field. They trail after the first half. Yeah, what a what a first half for Santa Clara. Knew they had to manage the pressure for North Carolina coming into this game. Did that made it predictable defensively, worked their way into the game, got a crucial goal from Daquila, and then have done well just to maintain, continue to create some opportunities. But North Carolina on the other side, just too predictable, have brought in their second unit, but narrowed the game, haven't really got any good dangerous opportunities on frame. We'll see if we can chat with the coaches at halftime, get their thoughts on the first half and what we're looking for in the second half. Right now, it's the Santa Clara Broncos trying to spoil the ACC party at the College Cup. They lead the Tar Heels 1-0 after our first half of play. One nothing our score as it is halftime of our second College Cup semifinal of the evening from Cary, North Carolina. The Santa Clara Broncos on top of the North Carolina Tar Heels after the first 45 minutes. Jen Hildreth, Lori Lindsay, and a lot of North Carolina early in this one, Lori. Yeah, it was the pressure that created a lot of opportunities versus Macy Bell. Pinto gets a free kick. Can't get enough on the pass. But Izzy Cox again applying some pressure, making it difficult for Santa Clara to get out of their own end. Gambone getting into the mix as well, forcing a big save from Nicholas. But then it would be Santa Clara starting to work their way into the game. A good look from Julie Doyle and then a mistake in the back from Allen. Tequila would be able to pounce on. It's a really good composed finish to put her team up 1-0. Izzy Tequila punching it home in the 20th minute. That's the difference so far. North Carolina out shooting Santa Clara. Fewest shots tied for the fewest shots in a first half all year by the Broncos. Really good first half, and we'll see how North Carolina comes out, obviously, with their two units, but for sure we'll have a ton of energy working to get themselves back in the game. It'll be about Santa Clara just settling themselves in and connecting passes, as we heard Jerry Smith say. We'll be back with the start of our second half just a few moments away. Stick around. North Carolina, Santa Clara, second half, coming up. We're just about ready to start the second half from Cary, North Carolina. The Tar Heels trailing the Broncos of Santa Clara, now joined by North Carolina head coach Anson Dorrance. Anson, your thoughts on that first half and what you guys need to do to get the equalizer in this one? Well, actually, uh, I haven't been disappointed with our play. We've done some good things. Uh, obviously, uh, playing against that front line for Santa Clara is absolutely terrifying. Uh, their players are elite. Uh, Jerry Smith does an absolutely brilliant job coaching them. They're always dangerous in attacking transition. Uh, so uh, we've got to figure out ways to uh, obviously get something on frame. We've had some chances, uh, not great chances, but some chances in that half. Uh, but still, it's got to be on frame. Uh, right now, we're sort of blasting the ball in the general direction of the goal. Uh, that's not good enough for this goalkeeper and this team. So we've got to hit something on frame. We've got to make something happen. And you guys are absolutely right. Uh, we've got to figure something out to, to get the ball in the back of their net. Well, we'll see what you come up with. Thanks so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. I know he's got something in his back pocket. He's been in quite a few of these big games. Anson Dorrance, 21 NCAA championships under his watch for North Carolina, 22 national championships. One of those coming before it was an NCAA event. So what do you think, Lori? I mean, I, I, you know, Brianna Pinto didn't get to see an awful lot of her in the first half. She has 13 goals. Well, I do think that she is going to be one of the key players. We talked about it early on in the game when she was getting on the ball, which is those two tens for North Carolina, Meza and Pinto. And depending on how Santa Clara comes out, if they still employ just one holding mid, can they utilize those two attacking mids for North Carolina to put them under pressure, but then take that extra step in, in finding even more clear-cut opportunities, be a bit more patient, as we heard Anson say. Do they need to switch the point of attack, find the width, and then get late runners in? Claudia Dickey. Number one in the NCAA, 15 shutouts on the season. Just an incredible number, especially when you consider all the changes, the overhaul that the defense had to go through for the Tar Heels. Losing Emily Fox, losing Julia Dorsey to lacrosse this spring, and Macy Bell not starting this second half for North Carolina. Well, this is Talia Della Peruta, so we'll see. What was the plan? 
They'd want to save Bell perhaps to come in later if needed, especially if a change in formation might be needed if they find themselves chasing the game. And depending on why that reason is that they're not starting Macy Bell, I think it makes sense though with the continuity in that back line. Cox gets one through. Jones. Bell Peruta. Left footed roller. Del Peruta may play on that back line, but it is more of an attacking-minded player. And Gambone just missed timing, getting her head onto the ball. Skylar Smith getting the start in the second half, number four for Santa Clara on this near sideline. Tolentino along that back four for North Carolina, along with Allen, Patterson, and Della Peruta. Oh, that's a great ball in. Turnbow. Trying to turn it into something for Santa Clara. And she had Daquila on the right-hand side, just didn't see her in time. But the great build-up play, one ball takes out three lines for North Carolina. Good little combination play between Daquila and Turnbow. Just nothing in the end to finish it off. Terrifying, as Anson Dorn said. That front line, the attack for Santa Clara. And it's a ball from Miloeda that splits the lines, and there's a little quick combination play. And Daquilla wants the ball back. Turnbow gets called. Gets caught with the ball underneath her, allowing for North Carolina to get numbers back in behind. And really credit to all the players in front of Oeda that that is the first time we have called her name. The center back, two-time West Coast Conference Defensive Player of the Year, really leading that back line for Santa Clara keeping everyone organized in front of her. And that's been a key to their success, just staying tight between the lines, dropping and stepping when needed, limiting the amount of space. Good cutback from Del Peruta. Tried to poke it through for either Cox or Pinto, but the offside play, I think, would have taken it away even had they tried to go for it. Della Peruta doing a good job of making some runs in, but you can see how early North Carolina is on their runners, just cutting down their own space. Pinto's shot, too easy. Got it on frame. I know that's something Anton Doran said, but did not really challenge the goalkeeper. Santa Clara shot is saved by Dickey. And every time Santa Clara goes down into their offensive end, they look like they can score a goal. This time it's Turnbow, takes it herself, cuts inside just to separate herself. It's a good looking shot. Dickey does well to get down, smother the ball. Turnbow, a four time first team all WCC selection in her career. 43 goals, 26 assists for the senior out of Scottsdale, Arizona. And she's on it again. As Dequilla peeling off to her right. It got under the foot of Allen. Dequilla not on target with that attempt. And not the shot selection that Dequilla would want, always leaning away, can't get her hips around it. But that North Carolina back line, putting themselves under some pressure, dropping early, it's giving the likes of Turnbow the ability to be able to turn in that space in front of that back line and face up, causing so many issues right now for North Carolina defensively. That connection with Turnbow and Dequilla, something special, fun to watch. 
Meza trying to find a connection with Pinto from the penalty spot. She's tied it. And just how quickly North Carolina can get themselves back in this game. And no other than their leading goal scorer, Brianna Pinto. They do a good job of finding some space out wide and they're patient. And then it's just a, a no look ball in. Pinto finds herself in behind. And then calm and composed as well. Look at that ball threaded through just those two center backs for Santa Clara. And Brianna puts it away with her 14th goal of the season. Team leading. One of the best totals, Lori, in the country. Those 13 goals prior to that one ranking number four amongst all players in the NCAA. And I remember, of course, Pinto did have games both in the fall and the spring to work with. Not so for these players from the West Coast. And that's the pressure and the energy and just the opportunistic ability of North Carolina. Oh, Dequila with a chance to take the lead back! And Santa Clara does! Turbo follows it up! And just like that, the Broncos are back in front! And goodness, do we have ourselves a game, Jed! End to end action! Santa Clara does well just to continue to put the pressure on. It looked like North Carolina was arguing for a foul. And it's an errant back pass for North Carolina. Daquila continues, but no, it's a slip for North Carolina. Daquila pounces on it again, and then Turbo, which is the presence of mind to be able to pounce on it, get to it first, reacts to it. She's just slow, and then at the last minute right here, just gets to it first, slides everything she can, hits it up for 90. This attack for Santa Clara is just too good to afford any mistakes against. A slip, a misstep, they are going to pounce. I mean, how often do you watch matches and you see a ball that goes wanting and there's a rebound and nobody's there? There's always somebody there, it seems like, for Santa Clara, ready to put it away. And it's unfortunate for North Carolina. Two, two bad back passes, two slips, can't clear the ball, but it's two times that Daquila has been the one to react first, put North Carolina under pressure, and really made them pay. Fantastic response from the Broncos. Just when you think that the, the momentum could start to shift with North Carolina and their depth, no better time than to react. The match was tied, Lori, for 30 seconds. <laughs> 30, that's it. <laughs> Pinto's equalizer didn't last long. A little bit of dew on the field out there as the temperature's dropping. It's getting a little later in the evening here in Cary. Could cause a few more slips. Cox gets around. Pinto's there again. Pass just not quite where she needed it. That is a handball against Tolentino. Alex, Alex. Good work by Cox. And Cox doing well just to put the Broncos under some pressure. Is able to get around the corner and lay a dangerous ball back. Jones fights her way through. Cox. Taken away by Loetta. Turnbow. Where's the Quilla? You can see her lift her head and look. 
And it is all this North Carolina backline can do to keep those two from connecting. But it's Turnbow's first touch and Dequilla's first touches that are setting them up for so much success, just taking themselves away, buying themselves a little bit of time. North Carolina can't get enough pressure on it. Libby Moore stepped up, won it for North Carolina. Now Meza had the assist on Pinto's goal, looks for Pinto again. Herman Trophy finalist for the Tar Heels, Brianna Pinto. Cox wants some help, has Della Pruta out to her right. Della Pruta volleys. And now it's cleared, but it will be a corner for the Tar Heels. Just the second of the match for North Carolina. Jones, ACC first team selection. Had to battle through injuries her first couple of years. Jones has a Gambone as a short option, uses it. And here comes Tolentino, wide open space. Not where she wanted to go. directing as she wins it. Gambone. Della Peruta. Pinto offside. I feel like there is a target on Brianna Pinto right now where Velcro and the Tar Heels are getting it to her. Well, she's putting herself in some really good positions. Oh, and that's a close one. It looked like Bubness could have kept her on side at the last second trying to get herself caught up with her own line. But Brianna Pinto really working herself into this game, trying to find ways to continue to put the stamp on it. Pinto trying to extend her collegiate career by one more match. She knows she's off to the pros. Going to be fun to watch her in the NWSL. It was already so much fun watching her and her family during the draft. That Pinto life. <laughs> that was awesome. Good hashtag. So good. <laughs> Number three overall pick, Pinto, just opting to play her spring senior season. And in those first 15 minutes of this game, Jen, Pinto was able to get faced up running at the back line in that midfield. Well done from Gore just to see that one out but it caused Santa Clara so many much problems because most teams are set up for passing, but they're not set up for somebody to run and dribble at them. So can Brianna Pinto drop a little deeper, start running at the back line again like she did in those first 15 minutes? Meza. Well read by Loera. Doyle for Turnbow. Nezu. This is where you see some of the strengths of this Santa Clara team, their ability to keep the ball, precision passing. Loetta unleashed a shot, so perhaps a little unbalance here if North Carolina can quickly get out, but they can't in transition. 
And Santa Clara needs to continue to look for those moments, just to be able to probe, slow the game down a bit. Start to see that second unit coming in and potentially a formation change for North Carolina as this half goes on or this game goes on, especially if the scoreline stays the same. Santa Clara need to let the ball do the work. So good in possession. Broncos in their 11th College Cup appearance tonight. But their first since 2004. They're looking to get back to the NCAA championship game for the first time since 2002. Would be just their third appearance all time. And in their run to that 2001 NCAA championship, that was their one and only meeting with Florida State. They beat the Seminoles that year. That's who awaits the winner of this one. Skylar Smith was wide open. She gets it in the box. Dickey comes out to greet her. Smith scores. Another goal and some insurance for Santa Clara. Goal, Santa Clara. And then North Carolina has no answer for those front runners for Santa Clara, continuing to punish them, being patient, finding the open space. And really this, this whole sequence was started by Julie Doyle getting herself in a little half position to be able to set it up. And the likes of Turnbow and Daquila would begin this play. So good, Skylar Smith finishing it off. A little combination play right on top of the box. Get the ball back and then loads of space. The back line, the young back line for North Carolina just pulled out. Skyler has all the time in the world just to look up, figure out where she's going to play it. Dickie Wells does well to come out, close down the angle. But Smith gets her own rebound and just fires at home, puts her team up three to one. Massive changes once again for both teams. After the goal, Skylar Smith, that's her third goal of this NCAA tournament. And she's come off the bench in all but one match this season for Santa Clara. So a real bright spot off the bench for the Broncos. Junior out of Cota de Casa, California. And still so much time left to go in this game, Jen, but three goals in this game. North Carolina given up, hadn't given up a goal all spring. Yeah, the last time North Carolina conceded was the ACC championship game on this field against Florida State. They went down 3-0 in that match. Did come back, Lori, made it 3-2, but that's as close as they would get. And they find themselves in a two-goal deficit against the Broncos. Macy Bell is back on the field for North Carolina. And have an injured Tar Heel down. Quinlan, I believe. Yep, that's who that is. Holding her shoulder. Sunday afternoon, we will have the FCS Championship game on ABC and the ESPN app. Well, football coming your way. Number one, South Dakota State scoring off against number two, Sam Houston. Our coverage starts at 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on Sunday. So many sports going on. Fall sports, <laughs> spring sports, all sports happening. But the quest for a championship, no less meaningful for any of these teams, especially those who are typical fall sports having to wait until the spring to play. OK, 
Kylie Halverson, one of four changes for Santa Clara after the goal. Along with El Mazai, Glenn, and Gway. Dorward giving chase for North Carolina. She's really been the best goal scorer, especially in this tournament for the Tar Heels. Did not play in the fall for North Carolina, but two goals, one assist in the tournament. Ruby Grant. And here's Bell. Planky got herself tangled up a little bit. It was seven changes for North Carolina after the goal, including Quinlan, who had to go off to receive some attention. It was Grant, Dorwart, Strickland, Hanson, Planky, and Quinlan along with Bell. Halverson's been quite good when she's been into the match and maybe a bit frustrated as she went down to the ground. Yeah, she gives him a little bit of a different look. Obviously, we talked endlessly about Dequillo and Turbo and, and their combination play, to, but to be able to bring on Halverson, her be able to link up play as well with some of those midfielders. It's been an added addition to, to Santa Clara and just a different look going forward for them. Gore. Smith, the most recent goal scorer for the Broncos. Two of the winningest coaches in terms of total victories all time in the women's game on the sideline. We'll see how they each manage. North Carolina chasing the game could expect formation change. And Sandorance talking to us about that earlier today. Planky saying it was deflected off of Gore, but that's not the call of the referee. And then Jerry Smith. Loreno, you had a chance to play for him at the youth national team level, U20, right? Back in the uh, back in the day, we'll say. <laughs> and you were telling me at halftime, though, just what a great tactician he is, and how much you learn from him in terms of managing a game. Yeah, to, you know, credit to him and just the understanding of how to close out games, the little nuances that it takes. And this team for Santa Clara will no doubt. Still so much time, so it's not a team that's going to start to bunker, especially with the likes of the personnel that North Carolina has. But they will have a clear understanding of how they want to close out this game if it continues to wind down and the score does stay the same. It's difficult for North Carolina to break them down. Remember, in the second half college soccer, you are allowed to re-entry, so can expect to see starters for both teams come back on before this one is over, as needed. And talk about formation change, it does look like Santa Clara could be sitting now with two holding mids, with Glenn coming in, sitting next to <laughs> Nezu centrally, so locking things down, making sure that they have cover in front of that back line. Pinto back in the match for North Carolina. That didn't take long. Cox, oh, right there to greet her is Nicholas. Nicholas has done well to come off her line and just read plays right where she needed to be on that one as Cox was extended out to try to get a foot on it. Yeah, by the way, Cox and Pinto back in the match. Didn't take you long to find that out. <laughs> they both immediately make their presence felt. Allen 
bravely put her head in, but that is a tough challenge. Foul called against Abby Allen in North Carolina, and just good to see Halverson get back up. Initially, I think it's called because Allen has her hand up, goes into Halverson. Potentially looked worse than it actually was. Gore. Alverson chasing, and Dickey really, clearly realizing she was running out of real estate, could not play it with her hands. Dequila coming back on now for Santa Clara. Got all the goal scoring started in this one. Only goal of our first half is he Dequila in the 20th minute. And then our nine-minute flurry of goals in the second half. Brianna Pinto equalizing in the 51st for North Carolina. The very quick answer from Turnbow 30 seconds later. And then Skylar Smith, the third goal for the Broncos in the 60th. Take away, Tar Heels. Foul called, so North Carolina will get it, get a chance to get some numbers forward. And Loetta, knowing what she was doing there, just loses the ball, a little tactical foul. Santa Clara now able to regroup. Patterson lofts it up. First ball's been won by the Broncos. Last couple of set pieces North Carolina has had. Del Peruta finds Pinto. Good place to go. 14 goals on the season for Pinto. Grant started a few matches, but a whistle will give it back to Santa Clara. Five starts in this spring season for Grant. Has some potential in the future for this Tar Heel team. Halverson. And those are the moments where I feel Brianna Pinto can drop deeper and just get faced up. She's playing back to goal right now. It's easy. Here she is. A little too long, maybe. The ball at her feet. And Bell calling for it. And credit to, to Santa Clara, just doing a really good job of making play predictable, throwing themselves into those initial tackles. Della Peruta gets past the first defender. Bell had ankle surgery, was expected she thought to miss the entire spring, just came back in the last match for North Carolina. It was her first appearance of the season. Played 10 minutes in each half. And the 
only competition that she'd really had before that was doing a little 1v1 against assistant coach former Tar Heel great Heather O'Reilly, which is some great competition, but not like we had a match. <laughs> Allen, excuse me, back up to Hansen. This drops in for Pinto. No whistle, but a corner. A good tackle from Lueda. Knows that if she's going to go to ground, she has to make it. Otherwise, Rihanna Pinto rounding the corner and be off and running. Gets caught from the misplaced pass. Does well to get back to recover. Rachel Jones, Sam Meza back in for North Carolina. Still Della Peruta taking the corner. She'll go to Jones. First touch from Jones. Got away from her. Smith. Looking for the diagonal ball. Broken up by the Tar Heels. Bell Central now. Pinto Cox making a run. So is Bell. Macy Bell can't get there before the defense does. Great effort from Gore. Time ticking away on the Tar Heels who have made the last two NCAA championship games. They were a penalty kick shootout away from their 22nd NCAA championship last year, losing in that shootout to Stanford. Ball not kept in, so goal kick, North Carolina. And better build up play from Santa Clara, keeping the ball, working their way in. Looking for those gaps. Have had to drop deep the last 10 minutes or so and absorb the pressure and the attack from North Carolina. Still 15, 16 minutes left to go in this game. Too early to be able to sit back. Just need to get a hold of the ball. Look to continue to swing it around, keep possession. Prusa can't win it. Menti. Her pass not on the mark. Meza. Half opens up centrally. Pinto. Brianna Pinto trying to keep North Carolina's hopes alive, but the defense just too good. D'Aquila. Lays it off. Halverson bumped on her way in. And Halverson's touch just too heavy in the end. But the movement up top has just created so many issues for North Carolina's back line. And this is where they miss the likes of an Emily Fox and, and Macy Bell consistent, consistently back there in terms of leadership. You mentioned Macy Bell. She's essentially playing center forward right now. She's the only player up for North Carolina. This is a center back by trade, outside back in this match. She is very good in the box. Proved that her freshman year in particular, when she was ACC freshman of the year, named the third team All-American, great in the air. All three of her goals that season off of her head. And with needing to get two goals to get themselves back in this game and a player that's only played 20 minutes before coming into this game. Just want to get her on the field. 
at least have her cause trouble up top. And maybe not have to cover as much ground, just saying, look, don't even worry about defending. Just be up there as a target, right? And especially with this, this back line, it looks like North Carolina has gone to a three back, starting to push numbers forward. No need to have Macy Bell back. This was the plan. If they were chasing the game, they would go to this formation, North Carolina, and they will not ask their outside midfielders to come back and defend. They want them in the attack. Those back three are truly a back three. They need to cover for each other. Just try to allow the Tar Heels more numbers in their attacking third. There's a ball for Bell. Nothing doing. Well, four goals in this one. Santa Clara got it started with Dequila. That was their only goal of the first half. Then, Lori, things got interesting. Well, they certainly did. It'd be Brianna Pinto getting on the end of this ball. Good little run out of the midfield. And then another slip. Errant mistake out of the back for North Carolina. Dequila pounces on it. And then it'd be able to find the back of the net. And then it'd be Skylar Smith that would put the third one away and almost get this game out of reach coming off the bench as a substitute, making an impact. Really, Jerry Smith's side, his game plan has gone to a tee. And no shots for North Carolina since that Pinto goal. This is a yellow card. Calm it down, <laughs> he says. Stay composed. And that is one thing that Santa Clara has done so well throughout this game is, is stay composed when needed. The energy, the pressure, forcing teams to play faster than they want to, that North Carolina continues to employ. But Santa Clara is, has managed that so well, kept the ball when needed, finished their chances, created chances when it looked like it wasn't going to be out of anything. You know, coming into this half, he said, I want my team to be able to keep the ball more and then take care of our chances, and that's exactly what they've done in this game. Kelsey Turnbow, her goal reclaimed the lead for Santa Clara 30 seconds after they gave up the equalizer to North Carolina in this second half. And this certainly isn't a, a Santa Clara team that looks like they only played seven. That, sorry, Lori, I was just looking to see who that yellow went against. It was going to be Santa Clara. Go ahead. It was on Menti. <laughs> I, was, I didn't know if he was headed over toward Meza, who just picked up her first. Well, this certainly isn't a Santa Clara team that looks like they've only played seven games in the last year and a half. Tinkering, adapting, finding continuity. Well, that's come at the exact right time because they put the pieces together tonight. Claudia Dickey well out of her goal. All or nothing right now for North Carolina. Everybody but the goalkeeper over the midfield line, and she's not far from it. We talked about this in the first match, but you just, I don't think any of us, and, and look, I don't want to minimize what everyone has had to go through during the pandemic in this past year. It's challenged people in so many different ways, but I think it's hard for us to fully appreciate what these student athletes have had to deal with in a year that has been so different than any other they will ever experience, they hope, certainly. Just with the isolation from their peers, having to do all their classes online, stay in the bubble with their teams for an extended period of time, all those emotions can kind of start bubbling to the surface when you, you get to this point, and it's win or go home as it is in the tournament. And it's hard enough to be a student athlete with focusing and juggling 
soccer and school work. It's a, it's a full-time job, essentially, for these student athletes, and then add a pandemic on top of that. And that was one of our favorite parts, and we were talking about this off-air, Jen, was when we were able to talk oh, to some of these, these players leading into these games, just the maturity, the emotional maturity that they showed, and, and the leadership from some of the older players to come in and just continuing to, in their words, put together an environment that's allowed them to be vulnerable, express how they feel so everyone feels heard and can get through these challenging times together. And credit to all the teams that have made it and these four teams that have, as you mentioned, been in a bubble for two plus weeks. It hasn't been easy. Yeah, and that's just this NCAA tournament bubble. You think about it, it's not a technically been a bubble, but for the most part, you know, these soccer players, student athletes have not been around many other students. They've just been around their teammates. So you you either develop really good chemistry or you really get sick of one another. Bell chasing the ball down, testing that ankle out, looking good. In Luetta, in the back line for Santa Clara has been one of the players of this match. So good coming out of the back, just the balls that she's been playing. One of the things, one of the principles of Jerry Smith's team, not taking risks, the ball she's played, set up attacks going forward for them tonight, just compose her recovery ability, her positioning to just manage those front runners and the energy employed from North Carolina. Outstanding from that center back. Dickey boots it into the opposing penalty area from midfield. A uh, chip here could be trouble, but Dickey covers enough ground to keep that from happening, and the ball was low. Three goals in the tournament for the junior, including one tonight. And, you know, we were talking about some of those famous Santa Clara alums and what a great program this is. We didn't even mention Brandy Chastain. You have to put her on the list, I would think, of course. I mean, I was just thinking that I was a given. Right. <laughs> We're talking legends here, right? So. For sure. A lot of great players have come through this program, and Jerry Smith in 34 years has done a tremendous job. And this may be, though, that, that new era for this generation of players to make their stamp on the program, chance to win a national championship. It's only been done once in program history in 2001. That was a win against the Tar Heels, by the way, in that NCAA championship game. <laughs> saying, what, where do you want me to go with it? Just well, tell me what to do. And, and trust me, these are some of the nuances of how to close out a game, just letting the clock wear down, even if it's just a few seconds, slowing things down, kicking the ball out when needed, taking their time. Really smart play. Let's see some of those numbers for this Santa Clara program through the years. North Carolina for the Tar Heels part, they have continued to get to college soccer's biggest stage. They haven't won since 2012, but this is their 30th college cup. I mean, that is just incredible. They're the only program that has appeared in all 39 NCAA tournaments, and they have just consistently found a way to win and get here to the semifinals and to the final many times as well, including the last two years.
Couple more substitutions. Gambone back on for North Carolina. Baker back as well. Jones will come back to the bench. Pinto. Dickey, who did play as a field player in high school. Very good with her feet. Comfortable, far out of goal. And Bell taken out. The throw in though, no foul. Good tackle. That was Loetta. Della Peruta. Is there something left for North Carolina? Well, Santa Clara is going to need at least one more big save. Nicholas makes it, and it earns a corner for the Tar Heels. Della Peruta has done well on this right-hand side the second half. has gotten herself more into the attack. Quick corner taken. Bell got her head on it. But yeah, Della Peruta has been active and involved. Move it back a little bit there. <laughs> really, Pinto didn't want to. Dickey's going to come up and take this. Just outside that circle in the center of the field. Couldn't keep it in front of the goal, though. She's frustrated. And one of the questions, too, coming into this game, Jen, we had was the, the formation for Santa Clara and what that was going to look like with Nezu just sitting there on top of that back line. But outside those first 15 minutes, really settled in with our positioning, had kept this team ticking and, and moving the ball side to side, linking play. Not the loudest player on the field, but just does her job and does it smoothly really good job of also just screening that back line, clogging up the midfield. Not bad for a freshman. On a big stage, figuring out how to adapt, something that the Santa Clara team has continuously done on and off the field over this past year. So close, they can taste it now. Under two minutes to play. Florida State awaits. Seminoles have booked their spot in Monday's championship game. Waiting to see if it's a familiar opponent or one not so much. Right now, looks to be the latter as Santa Clara with the two goal advantage late. North Carolina, we talk about the adjustments they've had to make fall to spring, but you think about really too, Lori, the way that this attack has had to be rebooted this year. And by this year, I mean going into 2020. No Alessia Russo, player who opted to go pro when she wasn't quite sure what was going to happen in the college game. Two-time All-ACC first team selection, offensive player of the year in the league. All-American, I mean, that's a big-time scorer, and that is what this Tar Heel team is missing on their front line. And they've had other players step up, as we mentioned, Brianna Pinto scoring her 14th goal. But when you start to miss pieces like that, Emily Fox, who we've talked about, Macy Bell missing most of the time, still have to give, regardless of this, this result tonight, credit to this North Carolina team for showing up, continuing to be competitive. 
and, and putting themselves in this position to, to get, try to get to the yeah. final. They never stop fighting. But we see you, Santa Clara. The Broncos making their way to the NCAA championship game for the first time since 2002. And a big time win for Jerry Smith and his program. They said coming into this game, the key was to match North Carolina's energy. They did that. They made necessary subs in the first half to continue to match that energy. And then they took it a step further. They kept the ball. They played to their identity. And they made North Carolina pay on the offensive end, on the defensive end. They asked so many questions of North Carolina that North Carolina couldn't answer tonight. And really, really quality game from Santa Clara. And they... They deserve this trip to the final game. It has been fun being back on site, calling these matches, and we're going to do it again on Monday for that championship. Make sure you come back and join us, both the men's and women's championships. Coming your way on ESPN2 Monday night, starting at 5.30 Eastern. For Lori Lindsay, our entire ESPN crew, I'm Jen Hildreth. Come back for that College Cup championship game on Monday. Santa Clara, Florida State meeting for just the second time ever. For now, we'll say so long from Cary, North Carolina, for the Santa Clara Broncos advancing to the 2020 NCAA championship game.